All right, let's move on to another shot now. So let me navigate to another marker that we have. This one is focusing on the shot where the scene changes from day to night. So in the timeline, I have two clips. I can navigate up and down to show you that. The top clip is the night scene. And I go down, focus on the bottom clip. It is the day scene. And as you can see, they use the same camera move for both of these. And then we'll composite them together to create the day to night. Now I'm gonna point out that in the actual film, they used a still image for the moon. I'm going to use a 3D object because I want to introduce the ability of importing 3D objects into Smoke. It's a very powerful feature that Smoke offers. So unlike the actual film, as I said, where they use a still image of the moon, I'm just going to change it a little bit to add a 3D object import. So the first thing I want to do is create some transparency for our top layer. So with it selected, we go over to our effects ribbon, throw on an axis. I'm going to make sure auto key is on. I'll take my transparency to 100%, so our top layer of the night is transparent. I'll move forward several frames. Again, I'll hold a hotkey and click in the transparency field to create a keyframe. Move forward several frames again, and then I'm going to take this to zero. So we've created keyframes of the top layer to appear over these last frames here, okay? Well, one thing that is noticeable as I scrub here, you can see the concept was great, where they're gonna shoot the scene during the day and the night, but they actually didn't line up the camera as properly as they probably wanted to. So to adjust for that, I'll select the bottom layer and I'm going to add an axis tool to that. And then we'll just take the Y and I'll move it up to line it up. So now the next issue obviously is we now have this big empty area down here. A couple things we could do, we could create a gap effect, put another axis on there and scale both layers together. But instead of doing that, let's take this into connect effects and use the action, the 3D compositor, because here's where we want to use a lens flitter for the sun. And as I said, we want to import an actual 3D geometry, a 3D object to create the moon. So I'm just going to select both of these and then we'll go back over to our effects ribbon. And again, generate composite is on. I choose create connect effects. We step in and you can see an action node is created and each layer is brought in. One thing I do want to point out is notice that the keyframes that were created for the transparency, if I go to the object tab and make sure I go to image, you can see the keyframes for the transparency came over. And also if I select the other layer and we go to our object, you can see that the position, the adjustment to the Y also came in. So let me step into the action schematic really quick by hitting the escape key. And you can see a bunch of nodes have been given to me. I'll transferred over from my timeline, the camera, and the two layers. It also gave me some parameters from the axis tool on the timeline that I don't really need. So I'm just gonna get rid of my shadow parameters. I don't need those right now. I just want these here. And let's create another axis that will be the master for both of them. So again, this is really the benefit of working with these nodes, how easy it is to control multiple elements. So if I take this axis, I hold a hotkey, I can just kiss and connect them. So now this axis will control both of these layers. So I can very easily just scale this up. Let's say 110, will that be enough? I think so. And I can take the Y down to position this. There we go. So now as I scrub through here, we can see that it stays in frame the way I want. Okay, perfect. Now, let's start creating the sun. And as I said, I'm going to use a lens flare as the sun inside of action. So let me go back to my tools. Let's first create a light. So I drag this light into my schematic. And the light comes in. We can move it around, obviously. But this first light will be the main ambient light. So I'm just going to go to my object tab and take the light and drag it way back by the camera. And I'm also going to switch it to be ambient. This way it'll light up everything equally. So there's our main light. Now I want to create a lens flare. And there's a couple ways of doing that. By default, if we go to our tool bin, I can create a light and I can add a lens flare. We have a lens flare tool right here. And this is the default. It's a great lens flare. In fact, let me just create one really quick. So I take a light into the scene. You can see there the light comes in just like before. Now with that light selected, I drag a lens flare into the scene. You're going to see that we now get this true volumetric 3D lens flare. And I like this lens flare, and it probably could work, but there's a whole bunch of presets that come with smoke, and there's a lens flare in that preset that I actually want to use. So I'm going to take my light and my lens flare and just throw them away. 
drag me to the bottom of the UI, come down to my tools and I'll hit a hotkey and I'll double click where it reads preset. Now the first thing you're gonna see are all of the 3D text presets. And these are great by themselves. You've got tons of different presets and animations and all you gotta do is import them, load them and then change what it reads to fit your needs. But I wanna look at my lens flare. So I switch to lens flare and I'll tell it I wanna look at all the lens flare presets that are available to me. And as you can see, quite a lot. These are great. Experiment with these things. They're just fantastic. I'm going to select this one right here and choose load. It'll take a second to pop this in, but you're going to see that it's quite complex. So there you go. The lens flare is brought in. I can position it over here. I've got all this great control and I want to just emphasize, let me switch my tool to be the orbit tool. And this is all happening in true 3D space. I'm repeating myself, but when you are in action, you are in true 3D space. Let me go back to my move tool. And in the schematic over here, you can see exactly what just came in. As I said, this is quite complex. And if you go to the object tab, you can see just how much control you have over every aspect of this lens flare. But what's great is I can use the parts that I want and not use the parts I don't want. So this is a part I don't really want. I don't need all this extra. So I'm just going to drag this to the bottom of the UI and throw that away. So now this is going to be my sun. This is what I'm going to use as the sun in the scene. I'll make some minor adjustments to it such as this. Okay, auto key is on. So let's start to position this where I want it to be. Let's say somewhere up here. And I'll set a value for my X position. So it's exactly where I want it to be. And let's jump forward some frames. I'll hold a hot key and I'll click in both the positions X and Y field to set keyframes. Then I'm gonna move forward several frames. And here's where you want the sun to come into the view. So I'm gonna take my Y position, drag it down, something like this. Again, we'll move forward some more frames. Set a keyframe again for the Y position this time. And finally, let me jump forward to say 10 more frames. And here we'll take the Y and drag it straight down so it's out of the scene. So now I've keyframed the sun, my lens flare, to come into the scene, hold for several frames, and then drop down out of the scene, okay? Okay, now let's bring in the moon. And as I said, I'm going to use a 3D object, mainly for demonstration purposes. So if I go to my action bin, my tools once again, you'll see there's an import tool. I double click on it and we're going to bring up the import dialog box. Now let me emphasize that you can import Alembic Photoshop files and it brings in all your layers as individual layers with axes on it, paint, FBX, great for working with 3D applications. In this case, I'm just going to bring in a 3ds Max OBJ file. And these are the default OBJs or geometry that come with smoke. And there's one that's a sphere. So I just choose the sphere object and I choose load. It's now going to import the 3D geometry and place it into my scene. As you can see, it comes in with a material already mapped on it. But I want to emphasize again, this is a true 3D object. This is not a flat image. In fact, to really demonstrate this, I can come over to my polygon setting and I'll set this to be a wireframe. So now you can see this is actual 3D geometry that I'm importing into action. Okay, I don't want this material that came with it, so I'm just gonna throw that away. What I wanna do is map an image, let me close some of my folders, of the moon. So I've got this image that is a map of the moon. I'll drag and drop it into my schematic, first of all. It comes in as a layer. This is just a default setting, and if I wanna use this as a layer, I can obviously manipulate it or do anything I wanna to do to it as I would any layer I bring into action. But in this case, again, I just wanted to bring it into my material so now that I have it selected, I can go to the action bin and with this geometry selected, I'll take my diffuse map and drag it in and it's going to map this image onto the geometry, just like you would do in a 3D application. And if we go to the actual surface controls, you'll see you've got a lot of control, such as the repeat mode, how is it being cropped and resized, the mapping coordinates, all this is typical stuff you do in a 3D application, but I'm doing it in my editor. That's the most powerful part of this. But here, we got our moon. If I start to move this around, you can see, oh, another thing I wanna show you is, notice how the lens flare is being occluded by the actual geometry. The lens flares and the lights in smoke are respective to your geometry, your mats, your alpha information of layers and so on. And again, if we take this view and I rotate this around, 
As you can see, everything is in three space with 3D objects and volumetric lens flares and so on. Let me just reset my camera really quick. So what I wanna do now is take the moon and animate it like I did the sun, but coming in the opposite direction. So first thing we'll do, make sure auto key is on. I'll set this to be 25. And let me start to position the moon where I want it to be. So we want it over here. Let's bring it down out of frame. Now I'll jump forward to the 90th frame. Again, I'll hold a hot key and we'll just set some keyframes to maintain this value with this frame. Jump forward several frames, adjust the Y position so it comes into the scene. Again, we'll just jump forward, I don't know, 115 sounds good. Again, hold a hot key, set keyframes for my position value, and finally jump forward several frames. And let's take the Y position and drag this out of the scene. So now I've created my keyframes and I've animated my sun and the moon to come in and out of the frame as I wanted to. Now, before you leave Connect Effects, you can render your file so that when you exit back to the timeline, it is already processed and ready to play back in real time. So this scene is gonna take about 50 seconds to render this, but the benefit is, as I said, is once this is done, I go out to the timeline, everything is ready to play back in real time. Okay, render's done, I exit back to the timeline. I'll go back a couple frames and let's play this back to see if we like this. Okay, this looks great. I'm really happy with it. But if I was unhappy or if I didn't like anything, all I have to do is go right back into my Connect Effects, make some adjustments, and come right back out to my timeline.